what do you say to something like that? Uh, I was just speaking with the president on the way in here, and I am, it's easy to talk to a president. Uh, I know all of you are going to ask me that. This president is, is, is down to earth and really told us some great stories, and I appreciate him being here because we've worked so very, very hard for 15 years to get the recognition that we feel Senecor deserves, and this man has recognized that. I keep Don't let me stand up here. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press and distinguished guests, President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for a very heartwarming welcome. I'm very proud and happy to be here. And you know, I've I've seen some of the products and the things that you're doing here, and I might just buy some of that football equipment that I saw <laughs> and use it with the Congress. <laughs> so long as you don't sell them any. <laughs> but I uh, have to tell you the truth. I didn't hear about the wonderful work that Senecor is doing all on my own. The idea of my being here is from Nancy. And maybe you've seen her, big hazel eyes, slender, pretty. Uh, well, Nancy heard about you when she was in Texas and she recommended that I stop by and I'm certainly glad that I did. Now, many people say that you and I, you know, we might not have a great deal in common. We're different ages. As a matter of fact, I have lived about half again as long as my life expectancy when I was born. That's a source of annoyance to a number of people. <laughs> but um, I think we'd be surprised to learn how much we do have in common. We believe many of the same things, such as opportunity, hard work, and self-confidence that work can bring. And it is beliefs that bind people together. I also believe in the philosophy that Senecor symbolizes. This center is self-sufficient, just like all of you will soon be. Senecor receives no federal money, and so no federal strings come attached. And uh, maybe you're not aware of how much of an advantage that can be. <laughs> uh, even though I'm a part of the federal establishment, you know, sometimes there are two ways of doing things, the right way and the way they do it in Washington. <laughs> I heard a tale I haven't tracked it down yet of a little community that decided they were going to raise their traffic and their street signs from five feet to seven feet altitude, thought they'd be more visible to the drivers. And the federal government told them that they had a program to help in that sort of thing, but under their program, they lowered the street two feet. <laughs> but to be fair about it, and the federal strings, let me mention something good that happened in Florida Wednesday night which is an example of what we're doing to prevent drugs from getting into this country. A plane was coming up the west coast of Florida over the Gulf that we had reason to believe was suspicious. A government plane plus an Army Black Hawk helicopter piloted by customs people were on its tail when it landed on a grassy strip near La Belle, Florida. The Black Hawk then landed. The two drug smugglers jumped from the plane to run away. In fact, one of them swam across a canal and hid in the bushes. The alligators didn't get him, but the enforcement people did. And we... <laughs> Ma 
And we see 625 pounds of cocaine, which I'm told has a conservative value of $187.5 million. And I don't know how you feel about it, but, well, I think I do. But I, when I just stop to think, of the little handful of misbegotten people that would have been getting that $187.5 million, I'm delighted that somebody headed them off. And that money remains. <laughs> the, somebody from Houston, the Vice President George Bush, is in charge of the Florida Task Force. And since last Saturday, 1,015 pounds of cocaine have been thwarted from entering the United States market. Now, <laughs> now as you well know, interdicting drugs won't solve the drug problem, but it will at least frustrate the process. The real cure for drugs prevention, plus what you're doing right here. I was glancing through your Senecor booklet, and I liked the very first sentence I read. In all the years that Senecor has been in business, rehabilitating lives, we have found that nothing works as well as work itself. And work Work is therapy. You feel better about yourself when you have something productive to do. And that's why I worry so much about today so many Americans who don't have jobs. It's hard on them not only economically, but psychologically. I also know the stresses that you here have been through and still are going through. I know what you're undertaking to put your lives in order, and it isn't easy. From what I've been told, you're learning again, or in some cases for the first time, what self-confidence, pride, and respect mean to you personally. The words I imagine are becoming more and more frequent in your vocabulary. Could I just stick something else in here from the vantage point of my age? It isn't true that I heard Lincoln give the Gettysburg Address, <laughs> but I'm old enough to know something else. When we're young, uh, we don't think Oh, bad things, accidents, and so forth can happen to us. And maybe we don't stop and think how important those years are for laying a foundation in this set of machinery that's the only one we get for the whole ride, this one. And when you get along to where I am, you find out taking care of that machinery sure pays off when you get along to this stage and you can still tie your own shoes and pull on your socks without sitting down <laughs> and do a lot of things that are much more enjoyable than that. And, uh, Sometime when I go in, it's a little tough, just say to yourself, uh, I want to feel the same way I do now when I'm as old as that fellow was. <laughs> I didn't bring a full-fledged speech here because I didn't want to be that formal. I just wanted to stop by and tell you how proud I am of what you're doing for yourselves. I believe, as it's said in that booklet, that the only limits to your achievement are those that are self-imposed I believe in you and what each one of you can accomplish. You're, you're working your way back, and I can tell you that all the rest of us are eagerly awaiting your return. I, Our, 
I won't be here for all your graduation from Senecor, so just let me say right now to all of you, welcome back and thank you and God bless you. here just a little bit. <laughs> we wanted to uh, we wanted to make sure Mr. President that we know all the flack that you get from Congress. We wanted to make sure that you had a flak jacket for your next six years in office. I'd, I'd put it on, but I saw that fellow with a baseball bat give a demonstration. I'm not going to do it.
please take your seats. Please be seated. 